Okay, so, sorry, I was interrupted. My daughter and her friends were leaving. So, part two. What I see is uh, going to happen in the next, well, uh, right up until 2012. Um, it's sort of like the merging of good and evil. There's black, white, um, there's past, future, there's so many different opposite experiences that we're having. And part of what uh, I see is happening is they're called pea brains. One brain is a particle with height, two brain is particle height width, three is a three-dimensional object, four is watching the four uh, er, three-dimensional object moving in time. You have to understand what time is. Kind of explained it a couple of times. Won't get into it. Slightly. Um, so you also have a left brain and a right brain. They both function totally differently. I can tell you ba the basics of knowing both brains. Um, there's good and evil. And it's the merging of both of these worlds that um, is, is going to take place, basically. Um, I think that merging isn't quite there yet, but I think we will be tipping the experience that picture it as this big black hole in the universe, um, your planet, as round as you thought it was, ain't so round, but it's an aspect of something bigger than what you can comprehend right now. And it's being sucked into like a black hole. Or it's being sucked into a white hole, depending on how you handle the event horizon. But take a look out in, at your universe. There's a lot of people that are saying a lot of shit's happening. The sun, you know. It's very much a karma effect that how you jump into the next part of your experience in, to, in 2011 will dictate how you're going into this hole. Because we're all going into something completely different now. Um, and if we don't listen to intuition, if we don't know how to walk into this white hole, the last place I'd want to be is in some cave when the earth is about to collapse on itself because, oh, we've mined everything out of it and put it on top of the planet. So, you know, there's probably a lot of secret lies about what we filled all these holes up with, uh, earthquakes, you know, volcanoes, Gulf oil. Like, there's a lot of hidden secrets about what us humans have been doing to create the effects on our planet. Now, if we approach this from the white... Um, we're going to transform into something completely different, you do have to know how to use your intuition. It's the only way we create it. Um, and it, it does have, the 100th monkey theory is the um, majority. It is the, the majority wants everything bad right now <laughs> because this is what we wanted. Um, it, you have to see where your self-responsibility is. That kind of look at you don't you want free speech, but you don't want to allow other people to have free speech. You want your version of free speech. My free speech, as far as I'm concerned, I wanted the free speech to allow people to communicate effectively on my channel. But when somebody wants to dominate it with negative speech then it takes away the free speech of those that are positive and want to stay in a positive room. Um, I thought it was brilliant. Somebody wanted to mirror my channel and then all the negative shit could be discussed there. See how far it gets you. You know, Does it keep you in the same box? Or would it be more productive having my free speech available on my channel? So I had to censor because nobody can censor themselves. They can't see that, hey, you're kind of disrupting things and mostly by being angry. And there is there's 
anybody that can oppose with anything I'm saying. I love the opposition voice because how would I know that I'm right if we don't have that conversation? But the negative conversation get, accomplishes nothing. It's pointless. It's useless. And I don't, you know, we have to censor. So it's, we don't really understand the language of human rights yet. Um, we don't understand the language of free speech yet. We need to really understand that what's good for you, or good for what you think other people is good for them, they should be you know, looking, but does that rule apply to me? And am I living by my own rules? You know, if we want a peaceful world, you got to have to be peaceful towards everybody, even while you have opposing views. It is only through the conversation of opposing views. While we release all of this information that won't be stopped, um, I do predict, though, that we will lose our electricity if we don't get our ship in place. Um, there's no way we can afford to, it doesn't matter what, how much oil is there. If you can't afford to use it, what's the point? <laughs> then it loses its value because you cannot afford to use oil. Now, going into that black hole means you're going to be having to be convinced in being angry with somebody and creating war because that's how we earn our living is by funding everybody into war. Even if it looks like security, even if it looks like police, even if it looks like it's internet security. As long as it's putting people back to work through uh, I have to contain war, I have to you know, keep doing what I'm doing at all costs, even if it means war to allow them to let me do what I want to do, um, that's wrong. Don't work for anybody. I guess there's a part three. Oh, peace out.